your own people first to develop a foreign policy. Turkish people is a dynamic people. And during these more security-oriented policies, more close, uh, uh, I mean, inward-looking decades, that energy, energy was uh, arrested. Democracy opened, opened the way for this energy. And in the last three years, we have one another policy we have been following was in the last 10 years, but especially emphasized in the last few years more because of these new openings. Uh, that elimination of visa requirements, visa exemptions. Why? Why visa exemptions? Because we know our Turkish ones, one European colleague asked me, why are you opening so many embassies in Africa? I said, you wish me. I, you, uh, your bourgeoisie, uh, uh, your businessman is very uh, high businessman now. They don't take risk. Maybe you don't need But our bourgeoisie, our businessmen, our entrepreneurs are very dynamic. And they want to go everywhere. Opening an embassy in Africa, the first cost is around 5 million US dollars. Then yearly uh, cost is 2 million US dollars. When you open five embassies in Africa, it is equal to the cost of one ex em embassy in Luxembourg or seven, eight embassies in Tokyo. But if a businessman makes a business of 10 million, you are already profitable. I mean, because before it was seen like this state expenditure and state and nation was two different things. Now, if a Turkish businessman makes a business, it is for state as well. Economy is growing and economy can absorb. Similarly, in Latin America, for example, our relation with Brazil was a routine relation until recently. Now, a strategic relation. We did Iranian diplomacy with Brazil. My friend says somewhere we came, we went together. And Tur today, Turkish-Brazilian relation is an exemplary relation of two very far countries. In many issues, we work together. This is basically, as, as I said, the new principle. Six, we said we will be active in all international organizations. There will be no organization, that's the new instruction. There will be no organization where Turkey will not be either member or observer or dialogue partner, whatever is the criteria of that. Now Turkey is either member or observer or uh, strategic dialogue partner in all regional organizations. We are observer of African Union, Arab League, Mercosur, ECOWAS, uh, ASEAN, uh, uh, Shanghai uh, partner, uh, organization. Oh, I, don't, I can give you this. We are, I am checking if there is anything. Even with Carib, Carib, uh, Caribbean states, we have relations and Pacific states. Because we want to be a way of international, we, want, we have to feel the pulse of international relations and we have to be present everywhere. And in UN system, for 60 years, Turkey was never the Turkey never be, become member of non-permanent member of UN Security Council. In 2004, when we brought this and uh, discussed, many of our diplomats were reluctant. They said we cannot be because we have very problematic relations and some countries. In 2008, we win the election with a record vote. 153 countries voted for Turkey to be member of UN Security. And now we are candidate in 2015 again. Why? Is it just for the prestige or the popularity? Today, when you look at the agenda of UN, what are the, what are the agenda? Syria. Which country is the most important country to do anything positive? Turkey. Afghanistan. Which country is leading all the process of Afghanistan? Like trilateral process, Turkey, Afghanistan, Pakistan. Like what the process of Istanbul, the Istanbul process, which I co-chaired with my Afghan colleague in Turkey and in Afghanistan in June, like neighborhoods, policies, etc. We are the command of, of NATO in Kabul, etc. Which country is more important in uh, democratic transformation in North Africa, Egypt, Libya, Tunisia? 
Turkey, which country can do most or can be affected most regarding Iraq? Turkey, which country was able to deal with Iranian nuclear issue most efficiently in the last 10 years? Turkey, you can check all the list. If there are 10 items of UN Security Council agenda, nine of them are directly, at least nine, sometimes 10, directly or indirectly related with us. We cannot say, okay, they are related with us, they will affect us, wait and see in Ankara, and make some routine bilateral visits. The others will decide and you will follow. No, this is this was 50 years ago. No decision will be taken without Turkish contribution. And everybody knows no decision could be implemented in our surrounding regions without taking Turkish advice, contribution, or some sort of Turkish input. We have that ability and we have that right. We have that right because in this world everything is moving and we will be affected by all. Now, this was in the last 10 years what we tried to implement. Now we have a new challenge, Arab Spring and European crisis. When we were thinking that now we are consolidating our power around Turkey and we are trying to adapt to the new changing world, suddenly these, these two crises did emerge. One crisis is economic crisis in Europe, which, will, which would affect all of us. The other one is political, huge political transformation and earthquake in the Middle East. You can imagine how much we are frustrated as Minister of Foreign Affairs for many years. I didn't make any holiday, and even when I was chief advisor. It is interesting. Uh, usually we don't have time to go to holiday, but whenever I go, there is always an incident and I have to cut short holiday. Uh, in 2006, I was with my family uh, somewhere. Uh, second day, Lebanese war started, I came back, and my family was left there. 2007 again. We escaped only three days. Israeli airplanes, you remember, attacked Syria and bombarded the reserve. Uh, they claimed that there was a nuclear plan. Again, I, second day, I uh, left my family. In 2008, I was in my hometown, in my village, with my family. Georgian war started, I left. In 2009, I, I, I had a, uh, I have a, daughter at the time, she was eight years old. Uh, we were making plans, they were, they always make plans for summer. She said this time, please, father, we should not go to holiday. Whenever we go to holiday, there is a war. <laughs> <laughs> this is the logical conclusion. So, now, when you wake up, when you wake up in Ankara, usually we don't wake up in Ankara, we wake up anywhere else, in Toronto, New York, but, uh, when you turn your is to, to west from Greece up to uh, Ireland, you have a zone of economic crisis. When you turn your face to south from Syria up to Morocco and Yemen, you have there, is, there are both two crises. When you turn face to east from uh, Iran to Afghanistan to Pakistan, now to Myanmar, I was in Myanmar for uh, the Rohingya issue, as you know, and I was the first minister of foreign or in fact, first foreign official who was able to visit this region, Rohingya region of Myanmar, in the last maybe 100 years, uh, because of uh, the you know the Myanmar regime recently start to have some democratic reforms, and they find a lot of me, but there is a huge humanitarian disaster there, and you have all these issues, and you have to deal with all of them this way or the other way. Suddenly we realize and we try to adapt our state, our institutions to this new region context. How to deal with this crisis? With, in the Middle East, when the crisis did start in, I don't, I don't want to say crisis, in fact it is uh, something positive, not, we should not be calling crisis, we can say Arab awakening, we can say democratization. In Tunisia, Abu Adidi, when Abu Adidi was in Sarah. We had an, an extraordinary cabinet meeting in Ankara, uh, and 
I greet our colleagues and thanks to everyone. And I said, this is not an, uh, uh, an abstract or isolated event. Uh, the end of Cold War uh, was uh, in 1990s in uh, Balkans. Now the Cold War will end in Middle East. So, because all the Cold War structures are still surviving in Middle East, but it's regime. Autocratic regimes, Cold War leaders like Mubarak, like Gaddafi, like Assad family, not Bashar Assad family, are still in power. This is not sustainable. So there is a need of change, and this is the first part of a change. Therefore, we have to take a strategic decision. We, we took a strategic decision, and based on two principles, we said we will be supporting the rights, legitimate rights of Arab people wherever they are, without any hesitation. We will be on the side of the people, not on the side of the autocratic regimes. If that people decides, we cannot ask anyone to return. We will not, we are not exporter <coughs> of democracy. It is not our business. But if a people decides to move, we cannot be, as a democratic country, we cannot be on the side of the autocratic regime and status quo. Like what Western countries did in 1990s in Algeria and Tunisia. Therefore, all this transformation has been postponed for two years, decades. Second principle, in order to prevent black bloodshed in this necessi necessary historic transformation, we will use all uh, means, diplomatic means, political means, cultural means, and we'll focus on peaceful transformation, peaceful and orderly transformation. <coughs> Based on those two, these two principles, we acted. In Tunisia, we immediately supported the people and we sent uh, assistance, uh, even for the refugees, etc. At that time, you know how some countries were reluctant to uh, what to do. In Egypt, we were on the side of the Tahrir people and Prime Minister Erdogan openly declared from Turkish parliament that to Mubarak that it's time to go. Yes, it is time to go for them. Why? Let me give you again. Today I mentioned too much on my daughter, but I will give you another interesting discovery of her. One day uh, last year, I went to 